Umar Ahmed, IFL TV, MTK Global. I'm in the O2, joined by a big cruiserweight, Richard Reactful. How What's have you been, mate? What's happening? All good, man. What's going on, Omar? Good. Uh, just back in the groove of things now, obviously, yeah. Christmas, New Year, and then the shows are going to come thick and fast now. That's it, man. There's loads of shows, man. Much more about flipping, what? what is it? Over 50 shows a year. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I saw them <laughs> put up a post, um, one show in, uh, in Tijuana. Tijuana in Mexico, I thought, no, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're really doing their thing, and Italy, yeah, they're doing their thing. Well, it's better than how it used to be, to be honest, yeah. where boxing was so dry, can't complain too much, but um, any news on you, when you're out next? Yeah, so I'm, I'm out 2nd of March, so it's going to be in the show in Peterborough, matching show, um, it's going to be headlined by Jordan Gill, but I don't know his opponent, mm. and a few other good guys on there, I think, mm. Anthony Smith Jr. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. Sims, so, Sims Jr. Sims. Me and myself, Richard Yakpo, <laughs> and a few others. So, yeah, it's going to be a big show. Be yeah, interested to see uh, Andy Sims Jr. in Peterborough. I don't know what he's going to expect <laughs> when he comes <laughs> there. <but laughs> he might be in for a shock. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, your mate's fighting tonight, isn't he? Best mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My best guy. You know, I wish them the best of luck and I hope he does well. Yeah. Do you mean that? No, it's okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I wish him the best of luck. Yeah, of course, you want yeah, him to yeah, carry on course, yeah. doing well. So, yeah, of course. the fight builds between you yeah, two course, and him. Of course. Um, but it, let's talk to him. Gonna, man? <laughs> it's good, you're best. <laughs> cool, man. Love it. Let's talk to him and uh, Wadi Camacho potentially happening. Um, what do you make of that? Oh fight? yeah, I think that's that's probably more or less made. So that should be happening. What I think the twenty was the twenty third. Twenty third, couple of March. March. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's a good fight. That could even headline as well. To be honest, I was trying to make that fight at the same time, but um, obviously politics, boxing politics as usual. And, but yeah, that's going to be a good fight. So, do you think Camacho can pull an upset off? No, I doubt. It, I doubt it, to be honest. I doubt it. But you know, he's he's not one of those um, fighters that you can overlook. He's got a lot of experience. But you know, Lawrence is a big puncher as well at the same time. So you have to take all of that into consideration. Um, but it's going to be entertaining. I know Wadi's going to come to fight, and that's the main thing. Did you see what happened at the public workouts on Wednesday with Dion Jummer and Lawrence Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> Have you sparred Dion yeah. before? Yeah, I sparred Dion. Yeah, yeah. I, I did a lot of rounds. Dion's good. Dion's good. Yeah, you like him? Yeah, yeah, he's a cool guy, man. <laughs> he was quite he vocal. Me out not too long ago. Oh, really? <laughs> did he actually? Yeah, he, he, I think he did, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's been calling everyone out then because he's after Lawrence. Out, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, but he's good. Like, he really wants that fight. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a big step up, though, for him. You know, just to take a fight like that. You know, Lawrence has had tons of experience. He's boxed at big venues on the shows. It's different from boxing at your core, mm. small hall shows. So, you know, it's but obviously, you know, he believes he can do it. He believes he can be him. So, you know, go for it. But there's levels to this. I'm not sure he'll get the shot next, that Lawrence, Down. to be honest. Yeah, but yeah. He's obviously, he won the Southern Area ch title. So, he's going to, if he really wants to make that fight, to make that happen, he's going to have to go for probably for the English. I think there was a. Uh, I think the um, the BBC ordered the uh, Chris Billion Smith versus uh, Dion Juma, mm. but that didn't that failed to materialise for whatever reason, and um, so I don't know what's going to happen. But anyway, he's going to want he, he needs to get that Brit that English title, and then after that, then maybe step up and ch and start challenging. When I spoke to Lawrence at the public workouts on Wednesday after the whole thing with Dion Juma, he seemed very sick and tired. Of all the cruiserweights in the country, sort of calling him out, using his name. Yeah. Said he doesn't, he doesn't even want to talk now. He, he said he's at, he's at fault for even entertaining the talk. Yeah. He's telling, you know, including you, Waddy, etc., mm -hmm. just to get in the ring now. Otherwise, don't yeah. talk. What do you sort of say to that? Oh, that's to be honest, that's that's my forte. All I do is is do the talking in the ring. I'm not one to talk. I'm a. If you see me out in public, I'm very, you know, I'm an introvert. I like to describe myself as an introvert. Cute. I talk a little bit, you know, fans come, they take pictures and whatever, but I, I you know, I'm, I'm a thinker. I like to chill and keep myself to myself, don't talk too much. And I, when it comes to fighting, I like to do it, do it in the ring, mm. do all my talking in the ring. That's how I am. And um, I don't know, you, you can tell by my last fight, big step up, took it, you know, didn't perform amazing, but, you know, we got the win at the same time. But a lot of people wouldn't take that type of risk in, in the seventh fight, so, or the eighth fight, sorry. But, that's just the way I am, you know. And every, people know the history if they know the history between me and him. But to be honest, it's just it's what just, is the history? Oh man, it's just I've got <laughs> How long it have so you got? many times. I've got <laughs> it so many times. But listen, to be frank, it's just one of them things where he's on his route and I'm on my route. Sooner or later, our routes are, uh, should meet, and then we'll do it. 
we'll do we'll do the business in the ring and we'll do the talking in the ring. Mm. Till then, I, I can't bother to talk. Just like him, I can't bother to talk. I just want to make the fights. I tried to make a lot of fights recently, and a lot of people have been like, you know, backing down or um, bringing up excuses here and there. People calling for rematches, not taking it. Listen, the boxing politics, man. That's what I, I can't bother no more. All I want to do is just jump in the ring mm. and do the work. That's it. Because I want to be. I want to be known for a guy that actually fights, you know, not just talks, not just tries to build up fights talking, but actually does jump in the ring. Mm. That's how it was. That's how it's always been with me. I've been mm. fighting all my life, like before boxing, before boxing even came to the picture. So it's nothing new to me. This is, this is fun. I'm enjoying myself. Let me throw some names at you. Luke Watkins, um, Jack Massey, these type of names that you want to be in with soon? Yeah, yeah of course. Jack, Jack Macy. I heard he was fighting for the WBO European. Mm. I don't know what happened with that, why it fell through. I know, man, they, I mean, I don't know. But um, but if he won that title, that would have been good. That would have been good for him to bring it to the table and to discuss. But obviously, you know, hopefully his promoter, you know, comes through with that fight. And then we can sit down at the tables and start make, making big fights in 2019 and 2020. Mm. But till then, We'll see. We'll just see. Everybody just has to keep on winning, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Dylan's just doing an interview with Coogan down there. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. you know him very well. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us anything about him? What's happening with him? Dominic Brazil, Povetkin? Yeah, he was just talking about, like, yeah, he's, he wants to make... You know him, Dillian doesn't mind fighting anybody. He doesn't mm. care. We've he's, seen that he's now. Just, yeah. He's just one of them things where he's trying to make the fights, and if they don't happen, he doesn't... You know, he, just, he doesn't get the hump or anything. He just moves on, continues and find out. And he looks for fighters that actually want to fight. And that's all it is. And Dillian is game. If the, if the opportunity is right, it makes sense. He's jumping in the ring now. Now he's using his brain. He's had a lot of hard fights over the last you know, couple of years. Like every single fight has been like a 50-50. Mm. You know? So it's about time he starts making some real money. You know, and, and getting what he's worth most importantly and also getting the title shot a world title shot because that's what I believe he does, uh, deserves and everybody knows that so it's about time Eddie needs to come through with that and um, deliver you mentioned the word money I think yeah. Joshua and Hearn have sent him free offers now free offers yeah, yeah and uh, I think they've been described as utterly ridiculous by Dylan oh both all three of them I don't know if you've seen the, the offers if he's shown you or anything yeah he's told me a few but he said it, are they utterly ridiculous yeah he said it's terrible yeah, it is terrible. Me doing my calculations and discussing it with a few close friends of mine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. What do you think about Wilder, Fury and Dylan all saying about Joshua's offers that they're derisory, ridiculous? I don't know, man. It's just... Obviously, you have to see who brings what to the table. Mm. You know, Eddie Hearn is a shrewd businessman. Same as Joshua. He's a, he's a shrewd businessman, even though he fights some boxes in the ring. Now... You have to pay, you have to come with reasonable offers to people that worked hard to get to their position and also deserve a certain percentage. You can't be giving people silly percentages because at the end of the day, the fights are just not going to get made. With um, Deontay Wilder, you know, I felt like he should have got more, more of an offer and that should have happened before that perfecting fight. And I think because of that whole build up and whatever happened there, because I don't know, He's not interested in making any any fights or responding to any of uh, Eddie Hearn's e emails. But I think it's going to happen. It's going to happen maybe later on this year, 2019. And obviously, uh, hopefully, they come through their fights. And Joshua was saying that whether he doesn't, whether he comes through his fights or not, or not, he still wants to make the fight. I don't know how you know how truthful that is, or how genuine that is, but. You know, everybody wants to see the fight regardless. It's going to be a big fight. But I think it will happen later on down the year. Uh, but he's focusing more on, his priority is on Fury. And with that Fury fight, um, me personally, I think um, Wilder will probably get him, get him this time. Really? I, listen, Fury is the, one of the best heavyweights out there, you know, in my opinion, in the world. But it's just that power, I think he's give, giving him more confidence. I think Fury could literally wipe the floor of him if he just focus, focuses throughout the rounds. Not show, sh he can show both team, like, but he has to be a bit serious at the same time because I feel like he didn't even take it seriously. That's how good he is. Like, <laughs> you know, like, there's a thing where it's like, you know, when talented people work hard, 
they're just unbeatable and then there's talented people that don't work hard and the hard work the hard work in boxing will always beat the talented fighter. That's that's how I see, you know, Tyson Fury. He's just like he's so talented, like he just needs to work hard, be focused and trust me, you the sky's the limit for him. Just the last one, Richard, uh been speaking to Joe Parry um yeah. about some work you're doing with schools. You just wanna elaborate on that? Yeah, so the work that I'm doing with schools, I go into secondary schools, go into prisons, do talks, give motivational talks. I'm trying to build up some programs as well mm. for this foundation that I just started to build, you know, just for kind of inspiring and motivating, motivating people that come from similar backgrounds from me and giving people opportunities to do different things in life. Because me growing up, one of my main drives is because I didn't have anybody coming to give me good advice telling me Richard get into boxing get into football get into something because you, your build your build is really athletic you can't waste it and you know you look you, you look like you could do well in this sport I never got nothing none of that and I just feel like me starting boxing I started boxing at what I, st I had my first fight at the age of 19 mm. but a lot of these other you know, guys that I'm fighting now, they, must, they started boxing when they were like 13, 12, 9, 8. You know, imagine if I was in that type of sport, like from then, how, how, far, would I, how far would I be now? Or how, how much would I have achieved now? That's what I always think. And I think that if I can motivate the youth to kind of find their definiteness of purpose, figure, out, figure that out, and just push towards their goals and, and carry on building, carry on working towards um, whatever they want to become, they would do so well and I just feel like I kind of took that position if you would to kind of do that to the kids and to inspire them and give them talks motivate them and teach them different things so I get this and I get tons of of bookings all over the all over the UK from Cumbria Southampton Stoke and Trent Lincolnshire um, you know, Grimsby all these places wow. I've never even heard of <laughs> I've never even heard must of must feel good yeah it's, it's amazing and I, you know, I go to universities, secondary schools, primary schools, you know, referral units. And when people hear about the story, I don't go in there with the intention that I'm going to help anybody. But I'll tell my story. But the feedback that I get from these kids when they message me, these students and stuff, when they message me on um, social media telling me how, you know, your, your talk has changed my life and this and that, it's so humbling. It makes me want to do more. It makes me want to be more successful. Successful so I can have more of a... I can be more of a role model, more of a reference. Like, look, look if Richard Reactpool can, you know, win this title, be a WBA intercontinental title, come from that background, listen, then you can do the same. And that's mm -hmm. what it is, really. You know, anybody can do it. Like, it's just all about just putting your focus and, and just um, being disciplined, so on and so forth. Well, sounds brilliant, the work you're doing. And... Uh I'm sure in time you'll get appreciated for it. Yeah. But listen, we look yeah. forward to seeing what happens with you in, in the cruiserweight division, what happens in terms of uh, upcoming fights. But thank you so much to IFL TV and thank we'll catch you. up soon. Thank you.